In this video, we'll look at how quickly and easily you can create interactive apps using Streamlit, Snowflake, and some basic skills of Python. All you need is a Python editor, even a text editor would work. So what we're gonna do now is add Streamlit into our environment. We will start with creating a simple header. You can change the size of this header by adding or removing those hashes up front. In order for me to now run this app, I do streamlit run and my app name. In this case, it's demo.py. And now the screen is starting to paint and I'll see a header right here to start to build my app. So what I'm gonna do now is connect to Snowflake, create a session to bring the data in. In order to do that, I'm just gonna cut and paste a sample code. It has a snow park. Uh, library in it, my credentials, and I am ready to go in order to connect to the Snowflake environment. So I'm going to now create a data frame from my uh, my table in, in, in Snowflake. I'm looking at the city bike stations data. So I'm going to bring a sample subset of stations from the table. So I'm using session.sql select star from stations, bringing in a set of subset of the data into uh, my Python environment, into my uh, pandas environment. So to do that, I do two pandas, and now I've got a pandas data frame created. I can visualize this data frame, I can visualize this grid by simply typing the data frame name. Now the script is, is trying to tell me that, hey, my code has, has changed, do you want the screen to refresh? I would say always rerun and it will continue to paint as I'm changing my code uh, on, on the left hand side. There we go. We see our data in a form of a grid uh, starting to appear on our app. So what we're going to do now is add interactivity to this grid. I want to filter the data based on, on different boroughs, whether it's Brooklyn or Manhattan or others. So what I'm going to do now is create a quick variable, in this case, borough name, defaulted to say Brooklyn to start with, and put my filter into my grid. So I'm filtering my, my data frame now. I can quickly validate my data. I see my data filtered by Brooklyn, change the variable name, and, and confirm that my filter is working as I would expect. So what we're going to do now is add interactivity into this filter itself. So Streamlit provides a widget called select box. I can, I can ask a user to pick and choose what borough they want to filter the data for. So here I'm adding my select box. I'll give it a description, pick a borough, and I'm going to pull a distinct list of borough names from my data frame in order to populate that select box. I will use unique function in my in my pandas data frame and it'll populate me a list of variables there. Now with the select box we have an interactive experience added right into our app. So users can pick and choose the borough they want to filter the data on and we are filtering the grid right there and then. So, well, I don't want to see this, this uh, filter on my screen all the time. I want to hide it, and as users need it, they can toggle over and go to a sidebar in order to do that. So to do this, I just add a sidebar widget into my code, a single word, and now I have a cleaner experience into my app. So that's the power of what Streamlit offers, being able to build these apps on the fly. So now let us add some visualization into our app. We're going to create a map to plot these stations in our uh, app. So in order to do that, I'll clean up my data frame a little bit. Uh, the map widget expects the column names uh, to be in a certain way. There are other approaches to build maps in Streamlit interaction with other uh, mapping technologies but for now we'll keep it simple so what we are adding now is 
a, a map widget. So all I have to do is st.map, provide the data frame name, and that's all. It figures out what are my lat and long columns and plots them automatically. So here we go. Now we have a map and a grid both added to it, and they both work in an interactive manner. So what we're going to do now is add some metrics into the, the widget. I want to look, I want to see the count of stations in each borough. So as the data is getting filtered, I want to see the number of stations to be changing uh, along with it as well. So for that, we got another widget. It's called ST metric. I can say what the metric is about, give it some textual context, and then put a variable in there to dynamically populate the number of stations in a borough. So there we have it. Well, it, it's showing the number 250 because I did the metric before the filtering. So if I move this line after I've done the filtering, it will now dynamically change for each borough. Now, this is because Streamlit executes the code in the order. So it, the order matters in which how you want the interactivity to, to work and the components to work. What we'll do now is add some conditional flow into our visualization. So I have a grid into in my app, which I may or may not want to see. I want to have a much cleaner experience. So the user can choose. I'll create a checkbox. Again, there is another widget called checkbox. The user can pick whether they want the grid to appear or not. So based on the selection, the grid will or will not be in my app. So with another single line of code, I am now added that component into my app and I'm good to go. So there we go. So in less than 20 lines of code with the Streamlit library and the data fed from Snowflake, we can build a highly interactive end user experience.